Welcome to the virtual towers of Binary Arcadia, where the games go on long into the night. So in today's episode, um, as those of you who follow the channel quite closely will know, Rich and I both have Alienware Area 51M laptops. So I was hoping to do a, well, it's probably going to be a combination of a how to and a how not to um, install extra RAM and also I'm going to be putting in a new SSD. So first of all, I'll just show you the components, what I'm going to be using, um, snapshot of the tools, and uh, then we'll just dive straight in and we'll give you like a sped up bit of footage of me installing it and hopefully not destroying it. So here we go. So what have we got? We've got the RAM first of all, which is this Corsair Vengeance DDR4. Um, and I've got two times eight gigabytes. It uh, runs at a, a clock speed, I think you'd call it, of 2,666 megahertz. The BIOS and the Alienware Air 51Ms, though, I, I think it will actually kind of hold it back to 2,400 megahertz. Um, that's just what it is. I, I bought a little bit higher just in case at some point they unlock some of that. So, you know future proofing if you like. So yeah, so we've got that RAM, those two RAM uh, sticks to pop in. And then we've also got this uh, Samsung uh, 970 Evo Plus NVN NVMe M.2 SSD to put in. So this is one terabyte, super fast. I can't remember the stats for reading and writing, but I'll probably put something up on screen now just so you know. Um, it's quite expensive, over 200 pounds. But this is essentially gonna be the, the main boot drive. So the complication with this one is, I'm gonna have to um, clone the existing boot drive over onto this, and then I'm gonna have to go back in and swap them around. Uh, at least that's the way I'm gonna do it. There's probably a better way to do these things, but I've heard of some issues when installing an SSD, cloning it, and the Alienware itself and the BIOS picking up, you know, which boot drive that you actually want to use. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll see if it goes wrong um, and I'll talk you through, hopefully, overcoming it. And then finally, I did buy this cheap little heat sink to stick on the, um, the new SSD just because I think it can get quite hot and, you know, I don't really want it to firm or throttle with its performance. I'd to get the best I can out of it but also protect it and make sure the longevity of the component is is looked after um, so I was going to put this on but I'm not sure now one because the profile is quite bulky um, and I don't know I'm just a bit concerned so I also do have the kind of I think the official Dell heat spreader uh, component which is much more lower profile and hopefully will still do a job for me so I might just stick that on and leave it for now and, I don't know, maybe monitor the temperatures or whatever, see how we go. So yeah, that's it. Um, I've just got some screwdrivers over here, I won't bother showing you those. Um, there's a bit of prying underneath the Alien to actually get the, the casing off. Um, just try and do it gently so I don't scratch it. And of course, you can't start anything like this without uh, a mug of tea or coffee, whatever is your preference. So absolutely vital. Right then, so I think that's about it. I'll, uh, I'll crack on, I'll speed it up and I'll see you on the other side. Right then, so hopefully you can see quite clearly what I'm up to here. We've got the alien uh, disconnected from the power source. We're gonna gently flip it over. take off any dust <laughs> that it's picked up. Right then, so we've got the Alien flipped over and I'm going to be uh, unscrewing these six screws around the edge here, which will allow this section of the back to lift up with a little bit of uh, leverage and prying underneath, gently that is. Uh, that should then allow me to uh, extract it. I think there's some little feet that kind of um, 
prodded into the base there, which kind of keep it anchored. So once I lift that up, I should be able to pull it out and then we'll see where we are. So I think I've got the screws mostly out. Little tip there, just make sure you've got a screwdriver that fits quite snugly because you don't really want to strip the heads of these one because you might be wanting to go back in in the future to upgrade, but also because it will kind of show through on that brushed metal finish and it, you'll see it and it will be a bit nasty to look at. So let's see if we can just start to pry this off. I think I need to get a tool. See if a trusty biro lid will help me uh, just create a bit of room in there. sound but it needs to be done to unclip it so we can actually get in there. Right then, so we're inside, it looks kind of cool. So we can see where the RAM goes here, we can see the existing SSD and we can see the install space for a new SSD. Um, kind of a key thing though is to remove the battery just so we don't get electric shocks. So let's try and do that now. Okay, so battery's out, um, and first of all, let's change the RAM. So DIM 1, DIM 2, DIM 3, DIM 4. So 45 degree angle, and then we push to hear the nice click. I understand we uh, RAM works better as in, in pairs. So I'm gonna put my new RAM into DIM 1, DIM 2, and then we'll put the others um, in DIM 3 and DIM 4, so for that reason. One of those has got to go in first, I think. Find the right 45 degree angle again. Not going in, worrying. <laughs> Try not to break it. that one in first and we'll mess around. <laughs> Not appear to be wanting to go in that one. That one, the bottom one looks a little bit wonky. We're gonna call it done. The computer will tell us if there's a problem.
We won't bother with the heat shield for now, because we'll do that when we go back into it. Let's take the screw out first. Screw it down, reconnect the battery. I think we're done. We shan't fully reconnect it. Reclip it now and screw it in because we want to go back in later anyway. <sighs> so, nice sip of tea. Hi, <laughs> so what I'm going to be looking to do next is um, make a backup for Windows on an SD card just in case anything goes wrong and then I'll look to clone the um, boot drive across. Right then guys, so I'm back with you now. I've um, I've cloned the drives using Samsung's data migration app. So now my um, default boot drive provided by Dell uh, should now be all cloned over into my Samsung 97 Evo Plus. And what I'm gonna do is swap them around so that this takes uh, the key SSD one slot and this becomes kind of the secondary SSD slot. That's just because I think the BIOS will understand it better. And yeah, just in my head, it seems like the best way to do it. Whether you need to do that, you probably don't. Um, and I've also got my other heat shield though that I'm gonna install. So I'm gonna do that now and we'll speed it up. Right, so there we go. We're back in and it looks quite nice. I must say the fit on this isn't quite as nice as the fit on this one, um, for whatever reason. But fingers crossed, we don't wreck the computer. So I'm gonna jump back into uh, booting it up. Fingers crossed it boots from this drive just as it normally would. And then I'll check on this. I don't know if this has automatically been reformatted on the Samsung data migration tool. If not, then I'll look to do that. And then fingers crossed on there, really. So, yeah, let's have a look.
Right then, so there we have it. Um, I'm actually filming this outro on the actual Alienware Eric at the 1M itself uh, as proof that everything went to plan in the end and I was able to get it back up and running. I didn't ruin the, the laptop. So I suppose it's worth just kind of summarizing some of the main lessons I've learned through this experience. The first one was when I cracked open the back panel of the Alienware Area 51 m It was, it, it's clipped in. So basically you need to go steady with that. Um, try and get some sort of a plastic tool because you don't want to be kind of scratching the, uh, the top the actual uh, where it's clipped in because again I think that's yeah it's plastic uh, so you could be scratching that getting divots out of it so get a plastic tool take your time try and get some leverage first and, you know spread that across and then you know a little bit of force you got to be a bit, bit confident don't worry too much and it'll pop out and just trust that it will um, and yeah you know the screws themselves you just got to Take your time, go gentle with it. Again, you don't really want to be nicking those and making a mess of those, you know, ruining threads. So just take your time there. The second lesson would be SSD enclosures. Now, this is a big one for me, but as far as I'm concerned, they're the devil. <laughs> Basically, I, I, to cut a long story short, I got one with the hopes of it making the actual um, install easier. Uh, and in, in making it so I didn't need to go into the Area 51 m quite as many times. But in fact, it ended up silently um, changing the sector size of the SSD I bought, the Samsung SSD. And in doing so meant that even when I popped out of the enclosure to actually install it, it was too late. It was formatted as into this specific sector size, which was no longer compatible. Um, with cloning my uh, the, the hard drive that was in there. So what I actually actually had to do in the end was send it back to Samsung, thanks guys, and they were able to kind of reformat it, restore it to factory uh, formatting, which enabled me to just, you know, kick off where I was, but throwing away the, um, the SSD enclosure. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they have their uses if you want to have external storage something you just plug in but like I say be careful if you're buying them for something like this that you don't that you do the research on whether they silently format and change sector sizes in this way so yeah lesson number two and lesson number three just a general kind of thing and that goes without saying really but just take your time don't rush um, if in doubt Google and you know have a cup of tea, coffee by your side. It will take as long as it takes. Um, I probably got a little bit het up at times because I got frustrated, things weren't going to plan. And sometimes you want to rush then and just bodge, but don't resist the urge. Um, make sure you set aside enough time to do it. Conditions that are relaxed enough that you can just crack on and not worry too much about things. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope there was um, some lessons there for everybody else um, for the the, the people out there who are watching this who have an Area 51 m um, I hope it has helped give you some confidence in trying something like this yourself because you can save quite a bit of money on some of the uh, storage options if you buy them from Dell as default you know versus buying them yourself and installing them and it's, you know it's nice to do a little project like this and get a bit more uh, experience with tinkering uh, on this level. So thank you very much for watching everybody. Um, please give us a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, it really helps to grow and support the channel. But give us a dislike if you didn't because feedback is always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to hear more from Rich and I and everything Binary Arcadia. And hit that bell for notifications too so you can uh, leap on videos as soon as they drop. And I think that's probably about it. Another one for the archives. Stampton completed. <laughs>